I'm excited for 2024. I, you know, it's fun. every time you begin a new year, you, you start thinking of goals and you start thinking of uh, different things. And But what I'm most excited for is 21 days of prayer and fasting that we're engaging with as a church. And I'm going to talk about that today. That's what I want to do today. It's Community Sunday. I'm going to do my best. I, to, I said on the 31st, we had a prayer service that I was going to preach a 15 minute message and it turned into 30. So I'm not going to lie to you, but I'm going to try my best to keep this short so that we can have some snacks and everything. But I'm just aware that maybe many of us in the room today or watching online, maybe we've never engaged in a fast. And when you talk about fast fasting food, you're thinking, yeah, I love McDonald's. It's fast. It's good. I love KFC. And I'm not talking about that kind of fast food. And you're like, what is this fasting food? I've heard about intermittent fasting for diets and things like that. I'm going to explain, hopefully today and maybe the next couple weeks, we're going to dive into this topic of 21 days of prayer and fasting. And I want to answer some questions maybe and give you a picture of what this means biblically. Because maybe, maybe it's your first time, maybe you've never heard of this, but maybe you want to engage with it. I remember when I first gave my life to the Lord, Um, And I think within that first year, I was just all in. And I'm like, what is this fasting thing? And I engaged with what I call a Daniel fast because in the Bible, Daniel fasted for 21 days. And I did a Daniel fast for 21 days, meaning I only ate fruits and vegetables and and whole grains. And I remember being so like legalistic about it because I looked online this is what a Daniel fast is you're not you don't have any sugars you don't have any coffee you don't have any caffeine any of that kind of stuff and you only do fruits vegetables and whole grains and I remember being so legalistic about it I'm going to the super to the supermarket and I'm looking on the back of cans if it has any sugars I'm like nope put that back and I was just and all I got wrapped up in was like am I doing this right And my heart wasn't in the right place. And so when you fast food, I encourage you, whatever kind of fast you do, and however that looks like, to do it with the right intentions. This isn't about losing weight. This is about coming closer to God and setting our hearts. Amen? And we're going to talk about that um, for the next few moments today. 21 days of prayer and fasting. As Mike said that if you go to the, um, we have QR codes all over the place. It's like the QR code church. It's like you just walk around the church with your phone like this and your camera out. You're bound to catch some kind of QR code um, and it'll take you somewhere with great resources. Um, but on Church Center, you, you'll find um, a resource there, a PDF um, and an online page that will give you an idea. You can read through it. I would encourage you to. It talks more in depth about prayer and fasting and what that looks like biblically, it gives tons of examples and gives different types of fast that we see in the Bible. One of those I just mentioned is the Daniel fast. Sometimes I've done a three-day fast that's only water or I only drink water. And please don't get me wrong. You're like, well, man, you're hyper spiritual. I'm like suffering, you know, and every corner I take, I want to just take a spoonful of peanut butter. I don't know if anybody else does that and just eat it, you know, and it's a real struggle. Um, And there's different kinds of fast like that. And we'll dive into some of that. But there's a really good resource for you online that you can go to. Let me just open up in prayer as we open up God's word um, and dive into this 21 days of prayer and fasting. Father God, we just thank you that you are good, and I thank you, Lord, for your word today, that it doesn't return to you void. It accomplishes everything that you sent it to do. I pray today that you would give us insight, God, that you would encourage us, that you would challenge us, God, and that we would feel um, this year vision and passion as we begin. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let me just read to you quickly Matthew chapter 6, starting in verse 16. Um, In one occasion, uh, Jesus tells the disciples, he says, when you pray, when you pray. And the fact that Jesus says, when you pray, he's he's not saying if you pray. He's saying when you pray. (laughs) So Jesus is assuming that prayer is a part of your Christian walk, when you pray. And at the beginning of Matthew chapter 6, verse 16, he says, And when you fast, and when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces that their fasting might be seen by others. So in other words, don't go around being like, oh, I'm fasting. I'm hyper spiritual, you know, like starting a TikTok about your fasting journey and letting everybody know how spiritual you are. 
It's not about that. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you have fast, when you fast, anoint your head with oil and wash your face that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. Can I just tell you that fat, fasting is a key that will unlock things in your spiritual life that you've not experienced before. And Jesus says, when you fast, he's talking to us as if he assumes that you will fast. He's not saying, if you fast, this is for the elite Christians. We, uh, if you fast, this is, for, uh, this is for the ones who've been Christians for 10 years or more. This is only for the pastors and the leaders. This is to disciples, people who call themselves followers of Jesus, and we should follow him in fasting. And now I'm not saying you should jump into a 21-day fast fruits and vegetables. I'm not saying that. In fact, I would encourage you to, to set the bar to a place where you can reach it and you're not discouraged more than anything, especially if this is the first time that you would, it would do this. But during this 21 days, we're going to, as a church, um, engage in prayer and fasting. And we're going to have all different opportunities for you to come, go on prayer walks, meet at people's homes, meet at different venues for prayer. And we're going to publish that. That will also be on one of the many QR codes that we have around here. Um, and you can, you can see that listed in different locations. Some of them are already out on the website and on Church Center, so you can find that. And some are to be determined um, that we'll post within the coming days. And also on Church Center, you'll find the, there's a WhatsApp group because everybody needs a new WhatsApp group, right? Everybody needs a new WhatsApp group. Well, we've put one together for 21 days of prayer and fasting to encourage each other to put the devotional out there. We've got a devotional that will go out um, that we'll send out. So get on that. I'm not going to send it to the whole church because we don't want people unsubscribing from church emails because they get an email every day. So we're going to put that in the WhatsApp group. Go to church center, scan the QR code. Okay, announcements are over. I want to talk to you today about when you fast. Turn to your neighbor and say, when you fast. You maybe walked in today, didn't know you were fasting, but when you fast, when you fast. Um, I'm going to say, say something that maybe um, if there's anybody who works in IT in here, could you maybe just close your ears for a minute? Um, because I've discovered the secret. I've discovered the secret. Um, anytime that I have technology that doesn't work, um, a computer. For example, this morning, the Apple TV didn't work, and if the Apple TV didn't work while I was getting ready for church, the kids would have gone crazy. And uh, whether it's a computer, whether it's my phone, whether it's some kind of device, I could go into settings, I can check the Wi-Fi, but there's one thing that works every time. It is the secret of the IT community. And this is what the IT people will not tell you if you work in a corporate place and they've called the IT person to come and they, and they, and they fix your computer. They, they'll tell you something really elaborate that they fixed, but really all they did was restart. For those of you who are in IT, I'm completely kidding. But every time, every time, all I have to do is shut it down. It's like, I, I, I just need to, I, this morning, I went behind the TV. It wasn't working. I didn't, went to the settings, went to the Wi-Fi, still not working. I unplugged it, and then I resurrected it again. I counted to 10, and then resurrected that thing again, and guess what? It worked beautifully. When my computer gets slow, I just shut that thing down. I tell it who's boss. And this is what fasting is like in your spiritual life. It is a hard restart of your spiritual system that's saying, at, whether it's at the beginning of the year, whether it's next month or whatever it is, to say, I need a hard restart of my spiritual life, and I'm going to fast. I'm going to hit the restart button and give myself a hard restart. Here's, here's how I would define fasting. It's the... It's to abstain from food for a period of time for the purpose of God. To abstain from food for a period of time for God's purposes. 
Now, some of you maybe, and I've done fasts like social media fasts and TV fasts and fasting Netflix and fasting ordering from Amazon or whatever it might be, but biblically, fasting means to abstain from food. So I'm not discouraging, oh, maybe during this 21 days, you want to log off social media. Maybe you want to stop watching that Netflix show that you watch, you thought one, but you end up watching five every night until the midnight hours. Maybe you want to do that. Maybe you want to do that to engage and to begin. But biblical fasting is to abstain from food. When it's mentioned in the Old Testament, it's this word tzom, which means to abstain from food. And when it's mentioned in the New Testament, it's nestuo, which means, um, which means to abstain from eating. Anytime this is ever mentioned in the Bible, it's mentioned in the context of food. Stop eating something. Jesus fasted for 40 days. Jesus had no, Jesus had no food for 40 days. John the Baptist fasted. Ezra fasted. As we mentioned, Daniel fasted. David fasted. We see the church in Acts fasted. We see twice in the book of Acts where the church fasted. This is a biblical principle like tithing, like prayer, like reading the word is fasting. And I want to give you the key to be able to unlock an area of your spiritual life maybe you've never unlocked before or to remind you so that we can come back to this place of fasting to abstain from food. John Wesley, who was the founder of the, Meth the Methodist church, the Methodist movement really at the time, um, he fasted twice a week. And anybody who came on staff, he required them to fast twice a week. How would you like to be on John Wesley's staff? So uh, what days can I not eat? You know, like this is a crazy requirement. John Wesley fasted two times a week because he knew the power of fasting. He knew what took place when you followed this biblical principle. And some of you are like, oh my gosh, food. I love food. I love food. Can I just tell you when you fast, um, every, everything comes to life when you fast. You're watching TV, you see a burger commercial. And it's the best burger you've ever seen in your life. You would never see it before until you're fasting. Small stuff starts looking good. Those little rice cake things, you know what I'm talking about? You're like, oh, that is a cloud from heaven. I just want a rice cake, please. Everything looks so delicious when you're fasting. It's not easy. It's not easy, but there's a reason for that. Because number one, I want to explain to you, fasting humbles ourselves. We fast to humble ourselves. So let me just maybe give you something that, um, that's going to help with this. I brought my boxes today. The Bible says... The Bible says that we were created in God's image. God created us in his image. That doesn't mean that you, that God is sitting up there with a long, long white beard, sitting in his armchair throwing lightning bolts, and he looks like you, your image. What it means is, is that God is three in one. He is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. When you say God, you're talking about Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the Trinity. And so he created you in his image, meaning he created you three in one. So he created you, let me find it, a spirit. Turn to your neighbor, say, you're a spirit. He created you with a soul, and he created you to live in a body. He created you as a spirit, so we're all spirit. You, hear, you see it in the, in the Bible. We're a spirit, we have a soul, and we live in a temporary housing called a body. And the spirit is what God created to commune with him, and he created the soul which could be defined as your mind, will, and emotions. This is why I put it in, on the one Amazon Prime box that I had, because it's your soul, it's your mind, your will, and emotions that says, um, by now, you know what I'm talking about? Like, like, oh, I don't really know if I need that, but by now, like that, that's that, that's that part of you that walks past Dunkin' Donuts is like, uh, yeah, I need that. Um, I definitely need the extra scoop of ice cream today because I've had a bad day. It is your soul. It's your mind, will, and emotions that God created for his glory, but it's the mind, will, and emotions that sometimes get us in trouble. And we live in a body. 
we live in a body. The Bible also describes the soul as the flesh, as our fleshly nature. It's that desire, that thing in us that we're like, I know what the right thing is, but I don't want to do the right thing. Anybody know that? Or am I the only imperfect person in here? Like when somebody, like when somebody pulls out in front of you or cuts you in line, you know that you're supposed to just be the Christian, and, but really what you want to do is lay hands on them you're like, it's that part of you that, like Paul says, Paul says, I keep doing the thing I don't want to do. That's the soul. And if we're not careful, the soul can be the most prominent part of who we are. And so we live in this, we live in this body. Let me just work my boxes here. And the soul becomes everything that we listen to. We listen to our emotions. We listen to our feelings. And that's the only thing that governs us. And we become really immature in our thinking when the soul governs us. None of these are bad in themselves, but God designed us for the spirit man who God created us to be to be the thing that governs us, to be the thing that has authority in our life. And our spirit comes first, and our spirit tells our soul what to, even though I feel like it, I have something that's greater in me, the spirit who's governing my life and telling me what to do. Because everything I feel probably isn't the right thing. Now, don't hear what I'm not saying. What I'm not saying is that the soul is evil. I'm not saying that the soul is bad because God created your emotions. God created your personality. God created that part of you. But if you let it rule you and you let it govern you, you're going to end up spiraling out of control. You're going to need the, the spiritual IT person to come give you a hard restart. You're going to need something inside to make a change in you. And what fasting does is it's a reset to say, I'm, I'm, I'm saying to my emotions that I really want that food. And I'm saying to my flesh, my desire, that very first carnal nature to eat. I'm saying no to that so that my spirit man can take dominance in my life. Are you with me so far? Okay. Fasting is to humble ourselves. That's why Galatians 5, 17, it explains the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the spirit, and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to keep from doing the things you do not want to do. John 4, 24 says, God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. We worship him in spirit and in truth. Have you, ever, have you ever gotten a shirt that you were wearing wet, you decided to jump in the lake with your shirt on because you didn't have a beach bod yet, and you were like, I don't want anybody to see me, and you jumped in, and then when you got out and the shirt was soaking wet, or somebody did the ice bucket challenge to you, I don't know, and they poured water all over you, and you tried to take the wet shirt off, you try to take the wet shirt off to put something dry on or to dry off. Have you noticed that when the wet shirt is on, how hard it is to get off? Hey, you're just like you're looking like you're looking like you're stuck in something, and people are like, "What is this dude doing?" And you're like trying to take this wet shirt off because it's stuck in on you. It's stuck on you. That's the way our flesh is when we feed when we feed our flesh when we feed only our emotions and only our carnal desires. It, it, it sticks on us. It sticks on us. And it becomes hard to get off, and the habits become hard to break, and and the emotions become oh that's just who I am, and that's just what I that's just what I do, and we just we say okay I'm just going to live with this, and, and and it becomes hard to get off, and what fasting does in a sense is dries that up. It dries that up to say this is this is it, it doesn't it doesn't sit on me heavy anymore, it doesn't stick to me anymore. 
I'm just, I, this is just, this is just a part of who I am, but it doesn't control me. I can, I can get it off. I can get it off. Fast, we don't just fast to humble ourselves. We fast for breakthrough in possible situations. Matthew 17 says, then the disciples came to Jesus. They had just tried to cast out a demon. I don't know if you've tried to do that last week or if this is something that you're struggling with, but the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, why could we not drive it out? Talking about this demon. And he said to them, because of the littleness of your faith, for truly I say to you, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. But then he says, but... This kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. We fast for breakthrough in our life that is impossible for us to do. When you are in an impossible situation, when you need breakthrough in your life, fast. When you need something, when you need something to break in your life, in your marriage, in your workplace, in your career, in your university, in your thought life, when you need something to break that you're like, I've tried this, I've tried that, nothing's working, come to a fast because Jesus even says some things like this only come out by prayer and fasting. There's some things that only take place when you pray and when you fast. It is a spiritual key that if you would engage with it, it will unlock areas of your life that you haven't seen before. We fast for breakthroughs in our life. And then lastly, we fast to recenter our lives around Jesus and his will. It's a, it's a recentering. It's a it's a refocusing when I've lost my way, when my priorities have gotten off track, when Jesus hasn't become the center, maybe he's just become a component of my life, and I've got all these different components that I bolt onto my life, and Jesus is just one of those components, and I'm experiencing spiritual uh, lack, I'm experiencing, experiencing no passion anymore, I, 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 need, I need to recenter my life around Jesus, what fasting does is it stops us for however long we do it, for us as a church in this moment we're taking 21 days to recenter our lives around Jesus and his will for us that's why I've been praying as a church what is God saying to us as a church what is God saying to us as a church this year and I feel some things and I've got some different things but I'm waiting until we come through this 21 days of fasting and prayer and I'm going to be praying through those things because I'm asking God, God, I want to recenter around you, Jesus. And I want to know what the will of my life is. I want to know what the will of this church is. I want to hear you clearly. And that's why I'm stopping for 21 days and becoming intentional to hear that. Fast to recenter our lives around Jesus. You know that button on Google Maps, you know, right? When for some reason you've clicked the wrong button and it starts spinning and it starts getting off and you hit the recenter and it just recalculates and puts you right on track. This is what fasting does is it's it's hitting that button again to say I'm recentering so that I don't get turned around so that I can focus on the way that God has for me. I'm recentering my life. The worship team you could come. I'm going to close in 3.2 minutes. Ezra 8:21 says this. As I said Ezra fasted in the Bible, Old Testament it says, then I proclaimed to fast there at the river of Ahava, that we might humble ourselves before our God, to seek him, the to seek from him the right way for us and our little ones and all our possessions. I I, I I I'm calling a fast because we need to seek him for the right way for us. Not my way. Not my plans, but Jesus, what is the right direction? What is the right way for me to go? I'm seeking you so that you can reestablish your will in my life. I'm recentering my life around Jesus. And can I just tell you, you you fast for your family, you fast for your loved ones. This isn't just for you. You're going to see breakthrough in your life. And my challenge to all of us is, is let's engage with this. Let's engage with this. Let's engage with this. 
Make this a moment where you start your new year focusing, recentering on Jesus, establishing breakthrough in your life. Let's, let's see what God will do. Let's see what God will do. How cool would it be to come out of this 21 days of prayer and fasting? And maybe you've never done this before. Maybe you've never engaged with this. Maybe you need to come ask questions afterwards. Maybe you need to email. Maybe you need to call. I, I, we're, we're, I'm available. We're available. We'll, 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 we'll walk you through this. Being on the, on the WhatsApp group chat would be great because other people will be doing it with us. You can, you can say, hey, I just need some encouragement. I just need some help with this. What are you guys doing? What meal did you make? You know, how, how's your fast going? And how cool would it be that at the end of this, at the end of this, we could hear so many testimonies of what God has done. Hey, I was, during this 21 days of prayer and fasting, I was, I was praying for breakthrough. Let me tell you about how God broke through. And during this 21 days of prayer and fasting, I was praying for a job opportunity. Let me tell you how God broke through and opened that up. I was praying for exams. Let me tell you how God broke through. I was praying, I was fasting for my marriage. Let me tell you how God broke through. I was, I was fasting. I was fasting for the church. Let me tell you how God provided and broke through. See, I'm gonna be, I, I got a prayer list during this 21 days. I'm praying for buildings. <laughs> I'm praying for increase. I'm praying for the lost, the people that are far from God who are look, looking and searching for hope to be found. God is speaking to me about this year, and this is going to be a year of breakthrough. This is going to be a, a year of the lost being reached for him. I'm fasting 21 days for, for that ministry. and we, let, let's. What if we just heard all the things that God broke through? All the things that God broke through. 21, you can literally Google Daniel Fast online and you can get recipes. Fruits and veggies, recipes for a Daniel Fast. You can, uh, you can Google different types of fast, uh, but again, go to this resource. Maybe you just want to start off with a three-day fast. Some people, what they'll do is they'll fast breakfast and lunch and then they'll eat at dinner for the 21 days. Some people, some people will fast different things. See, for me, I'm, for, for me, I'll be doing, we'll be doing this Daniel fast, but at the same time, I've just personally committed certain things I'm just going to be off of and stop and pay more attention to my relationship and my routine with God. And do it with your family. Get, get a group of friends and, and do it together. Cook meals together. Maybe some of the university students in here, maybe, maybe you say, hey, let's cook a meal together. Let's, let's do this together. We'll do Daniel fast. We'll cook meals together. And, and then the real thing is you just find the ones who can cook, you know? You find the ones who can cook. And let's see what God will do. Amen? Amen. Hopefully, hopefully you've been encouraged today. Hopefully that you've been Really, this is, a, this is a bit of a teaching to, to set the tone. This isn't a beginning of the year vision, but I've got, I've got some vision. But I can't wait to go into this 21 days of prayer and fasting for God to set that vision. So that out of, hey, when I come out of 21 days, I'm going to be tired, I'm going to be hungry, but I'm going to be full of vision and passion. So you better get ready. You better get ready because I'm just going to come unfiltered Daniel. I'm just going to come fired up. I, I'm, I'm, I might, you might even hear me speak in my southern accent, y'all, because it's just no filter. It's, I'm, I'm, when I'm hungry, I'm hungry. <laughs> but what I'm doing is, is I'm stopping the hunger for food, and I'm becoming hungry for God. I'm becoming hungry for God. That's why Jesus said, hey, when the devil tempted him, Jesus, you could just turn this rock into a, a loaf of bread. He says, I live off the word of God alone. I, work, I live off the word of God alone. I don't, need, I don't need bread because I'm coming to the word of God. Can you stand to your feet with me?
And we're going to take communion today. And our steward team, if you didn't get a, if you didn't get a communion cup in these convenient little cups, then um, the steward team is going to pass some around. So make sure you grab one of those. We're going to take communion today. Um, this is something for those of you who have made that decision to follow Jesus. Your kids don't have to do this. this if you, you don't have to do You're not obligated to take communion today. Um, this is something where we honor God because we remember what he's done in our life. Let me give you an opportunity today. Maybe you're in here and you've never made a decision to follow Jesus. Maybe you've never made a decision to say, Jesus, you're the Lord of my life online or in this room. We never go a Sunday without giving you this opportunity because we know it's the greatest decision you'll ever make in your life to say, Jesus, you're my Lord. So with all, while they're passing those around, if you're in here, I just want to pray before we jump into communion. I want to pray for those maybe who want to make a decision, greatest decision of your life to follow Jesus, make him Lord. Not just, listen, everybody wants a Savior. Everybody wants a Savior. We all want saved. Not everybody will accept the Lord. Say, Jesus, you're Lord. What you say goes. And he says, when you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. And so today we want to maybe make that decision afresh or maybe for the first time today. I'm going to pray for you. We're all going to pray and then we'll take communion after that. But if you're here today and, you, and we're praying that for the first time or you're coming back to Jesus, maybe rededicating your life, can we all close our eyes and you just lift a hand in the air and say, that's me, I want to make that decision today. Everybody pray this with me. Say, Jesus, I'm coming to you. You are the Lord of my life. I've gone my way. I've done my own things. I surrender to you as Lord of my life. My heart is yours. I'm all in. I'm desperate for you, Jesus. Thank you that you died on the cross to free me from death. And you raised again from the dead and you raised me to new life. Thank you that I'm a new creation in you, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.